Are you looking for a print-on-demand tutorial that goes step-by-step -step for beginners? Stay tuned. What's up guys, Bodie here, BodieDavison.com. So today's video is going to be a print-on-demand tutorial for beginners and we're gonna go through everything you need to know step-by-step, -step, so what websites to sign up with, what you need to do, what tools you need, everything that you could possibly need as a beginner getting started with print-on-demand. One more thing too, if there's anything in this video that you don't understand, it's quite possible that I've made other videos about it. I've made at least 50 plus videos now that are all about print on demand, specifically about Teespring, but also about Merch by Amazon, Redbubble, etc. So if you don't see it in this, definitely go and check out the channel. I have a Teespring tutorial playlist and a print on demand playlist. Make sure you go and check those out. Those will be linked down below. But any questions you have, drop them down below. I've most likely covered these questions at some stage in these other videos though, just so you're aware. Thanks so much to everyone who keeps liking the videos, commenting on the videos, and hitting subscribe. You guys are awesome. This has been such a cool journey building up this YouTube channel all about the print on demand niche. So thanks so much. If you're new, please hit subscribe. Okay guys, so instead of just diving into what print on demand is, I'm not gonna go that far with it. I'm sure that a lot of you guys have discovered this channel and seen many videos on what print on demand is so we're not going to cover that in today's video. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to join up to the three biggest print on demand websites there are. So that is Teespring, Redbubble and Merch by Amazon and there are other ones that I also suggest which are Sunfrog and T-Chip and I would actually recommend signing up to all of them because it's just going to be more of a widespread of your shirts all over the internet and as I've said in previous videos, if you make a hundred designs, let's say you've got a hundred on Teespring, Merch by Amazon and Redbubble, that's great, that's 300 designs on the internet. If you have those other two, that's 500 designs on the internet. So you have such a widespread of shirts out there and way more likely for people to buy your shirts. So with these big print on demand websites, you don't actually have to pay to be on there. And this is the beauty of the print on demand niche is that you don't have to do Shopify where you're paying for a subscription and paying for your apps, etc. You can actually use these print on demand websites and it's so beginner friendly because you're not actually paying anything. The only time you pay anything is, let's say you sell your shirt for $20 and then you're just going to get a percentage taken by Amazon or whoever it is that you're going to be posting that shirt on. So if you make a sale on Teespring, you don't actually pay for anything. You're just putting your design on there and then you make a sale and they take their cut out of that sale. So you're never actually putting up money up front, if you know what I mean. You're getting to advertise your shirts for free on these huge marketplaces and then they only take their percentage when you make the sale. So very, very beginner friendly. So as I said, in this video, we're talking about the three biggest ones, Merch by Amazon, Redbubble and Teespring. So just go over to those websites and sign up and make your account. As I said, it's free, so sign up and then we're gonna get into how you go forward from there. The only thing we need to touch on between those three is that Merch by Amazon is the one that you have to apply for. So applying for Merch by Amazon, it can be a bit of an issue for some people, not everyone gets accepted, but you can reapply if you use a different email. So that is like a workaround for it, and obviously it's very easy to make a lot of different emails. But some tips when you're actually applying for Merch by Amazon are make sure you let Amazon know that you're going to be uploading good designs and plenty of good designs on there. So this is something to mention in your application. The next thing is that you want to mention that you're not going to infringe on any trademarks and you're not going to be uploading any sort of company logos or anything like that. So you're not going to get yourself into trouble or get Amazon into trouble. And then the next tip is to make sure you're not uploading spam of any type. So you don't want to spam your title and descriptions. This is actually the same for Teespring. So when you're trying to get onto the Teespring marketplace, you, you don't want to be putting up spam. So they will actually review your shirt designs on Merch by Amazon before they put them on the marketplace. So just make sure that you don't have spammy titles. You're not spamming anything like limited edition, things like that because this is something that they look at. So if you use these tips when you're actually doing the application for your Merch by Amazon account, this is going to give you a step up on the competition because most people who are applying every day aren't gonna be mentioning these things and these are the three things mainly that Merch by Amazon's going to be looking at. So it's gonna give you a step up on the competition 
and give you way more chance of getting your account accepted and approved. If you don't get accepted, that's fine. Create another email and keep applying and keep doing these little tips until you do get accepted. Once you're accepted, you're in there for good and you're all good to be making print on demand sales with Merch by Amazon. So the absolute beauty of uploading to these three main sort of websites is that once you have your designs uploaded, they do all the marketing for you. So when you have a widespread of, let's say, like I mentioned at the beginning, if you had 100 designs uploaded and then on all three of these, so you have 300 designs on the internet of good quality, then these are getting pushed by Amazon, by Teespring and by Redbubble, which are huge websites, and they're going to be shown to a lot of people around the internet. This is gonna make it really good for you because you're gonna have such a huge chance of selling so many shirts and getting pushed all over the internet by some of the biggest marketplaces out there for t-shirt sales. So to start off with, obviously you have to apply for Merch by Amazon and that means that it might be a bit of a approval process, might take a little bit. So just start posting on Teespring and on Redbubble and get, get those designs underway, get that process underway and then just wait for Merch by Amazon to get approved. If you don't get approved, just reapply like I was saying. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is finding a niche. So what is a niche? A niche is a very specific group of people that are interested in one particular thing. So it could be guinea pigs, it could be miniature pigs. I don't know why I'm saying those two, but <laughs> anyway, it's a very particular group of people that are interested in a particular thing. So you're going to target these people with their niche. So, so they're going to be looking around the internet as they always do at their niche because it's whatever they're interested in. So let's say it's yoga, let's say it's CrossFit. They're going to be looking up CrossFit all over the internet and then all of a sudden your CrossFit t-shirts are going to pop up in front of them, let's say on Instagram because of a certain hashtag, a CrossFit hashtag maybe. And then they're gonna click on your page, oh, it's all CrossFit t-shirts because that's what they're interested in, they're gonna have a look through. And then there's going to be a link in your bio to your CrossFit storefront and they're going to be very interested in buying that because that is their niche and they are interested in that niche. So you are going to find your niche that you wanna target people with and then you're going to develop shirt designs that they're going to be interested in that are popular in that category and then you're going to market to those people. So within the niche, you really wanna dial down the niche a bit. So instead of just going for, let's say yoga, we're going to be targeting people that are into hot yoga and that are female. So you really wanna be more specific with your niche. The more dialed in you can get that niche, the better it's going to be for you to direct your targeting towards that specific person. And then that's going to be the one thing that they're really interested in and then you're going to be targeting them with shirts that they're really going to be likely to buy. So I do have videos that will show you how to target niches and you can check that out in the print on demand playlist or the Teespring tutorial playlist. But anyway, if you find it difficult to target niches and figure out a niche and that's taking too long, just try and do something that you're passionate about and that's also gonna inspire you to wanna do it because when you're making a hundred different designs, it's going to it's going to take a fair bit of effort. And if you're not passionate about the niche at all, it's going to be quite hard for you. So that is just a general life rule. You should be following things that you're passionate about and then it's not gonna feel like work. You feel like work when you're passionate about it or something like that, I'm not sure what it is. When you're passionate about a certain niche, you're also gonna have a leg up on the competition because you know the sayings of that niche, you know the ins and outs of it, you know the trends with it. You're definitely gonna have not only your own passion to create designs, but you're also going to know all the things that people that are in that passionate niche are gonna be interested in and you can make shirt designs that will definitely target them and they'll be interested in buying them. So the next question is, how do you find this design inspiration? Well, the two websites that I mainly use are Pinterest and Etsy, but to be honest with you, Etsy is the one I use the most and I do have videos covering this, but all you would do is, let's say it's French Bulldogs that you're interested in, you would go French Bulldog t-shirt and then enter that into Etsy and then go through and check out the shirts that are doing well and then get your design inspiration from there. If you see a shirt that's doing well and then you search it on Pinterest and it looks like it does well on there as well and you see it on Google, etc., and you maybe search it out on Facebook, then you know this one's doing well, 
time to get your design inspiration from that and create your own version of it. So no copywriting, no copying the exact design. Make your own version of it or maybe multiple versions of it and then upload them to Redbubble, Teespring and Merch by Amazon and then get started from there. Once you do this once, you just repeat the process. So you just keep going back, looking for more shirt designs and then uploading and uploading. You wanna create at least 100 designs. So 100 designs uploaded on all three of these websites and then go from there. So this is all well and good, but the first thing you're gonna be saying is how do I design these shirts? I'm not a graphic designer. Do I have to hire someone from Fiverr? That is something I've been asked multiple times. And the answer is no. And trust me, I am not very artsy at all. I can't draw to save my life. The number one thing that I've used so far and I've gone on about it on this channel is placeit.net. And I have videos on this, tutorials on how to use that website and I'll link them down below. So definitely check out placeit.net. This is the number one t-shirt designing tool that there is on the market. It also has the mock-up generator so you can put your designs on someone's shirt and then use that for your social media. You can even create videos with that. It is an unbelievable tool and yeah, the best t-shirt design tool there is out there. So other runner-ups that are definitely worth mentioning and definitely worth using uh, Typerama, which is an app on your phone and you can use, it's great for designing, uh, if you wanna do quotes and things like that, you can get different designs like that and you can use it commercially. It's available to use commercially and I think it's $4 or something like that a month. Definitely worth getting. So there's Typerama and then if you want a free tool, you can use Canva.com. Canva.com, you can create all sorts of things and I do have a video on how to remove backgrounds on that as well without paying for the paid feature. So definitely check those out as well. So out of these three websites, one of them has a design requirement size. So that is uh, Merch by Amazon and it's 4,500 by 5,400. You can use a website called bulkresizer.com and resize your images to be that size. As for Teespring and Redbubble, you would just make them as big as possible. So 5,000 would be fine for them. And Canva can actually do 5,000 by 5,000. So that comes in handy there. As for Merch by Amazon though, just use that bulk resizer and get that 4,500 by 5,400. So now let's get to uploading our designs. So we're doing well. We're doing very well so far. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you stay to the end. So. When you are uploading to these three websites, you've got your designs done, you've got your title and description uh, written out and you've come up with that that's got some keywords in it. I have videos covering this as well, so make sure you check out those playlists. I'll try and link as many of these videos down below that are going to relate to this part of the video. But anyway, now you have those uploaded, just open them in new tabs and then you can copy and paste your title and description on all three. And the beauty of uh, having these three print-on-demand websites is it's non-exclusive so you can upload whatever design you do on Teespring, also on Redbubble and Merch by Amazon and it's absolutely fine just like the title and description and then it makes it easy because you only have to do it once but you get to upload on the three different websites. That's also why I recommend to beginners that you should even sign up for more so there is you can do five of them. You can do Sunfrog and T-Chip as well, but there is other ones as well. You should just be putting out there a lot of designs, hundreds of designs if possible, and then you're just gonna have a way bigger chance of making more sales, it's simple as that. So out of that, Merch by Amazon is the only one that has a tier system. So your first tier is 10 designs. So you'll just upload your 10 best designs on there. And then the second tier is 25 and it goes on from there. So any design you upload has 180 days to make a sale. So make sure you use your best designs on Merch by Amazon. And you'll probably figure this out in that time you're waiting to get approved by Merch by Amazon. You'll have made sales on Teespring and Redbubble. And then just whatever your best selling designs are, make sure you upload those ones to Merch by Amazon first. Merch by Amazon and Redbubble, you just upload your designs and then they do the marketing for you. It's really that simple. So. Once you have them uploaded, just go on and create more designs. You don't have to do marketing, it's beautiful. It's so easy. But anyway, Teespring is very popular these days and they actually brought in the Teespring Trust Score. I have videos on this as well. So what you have to do is drive traffic and make your first initial sales. It's somewhere between two to 10 and also verify your payment information and that will be able to get you onto their Teespring Marketplace and then hopefully when you make more sales onto their boosted network. Their boosted network is where they advertise your shirts 
all around the internet on different websites, etc., and also do retargeting, email retargeting, things like that for you. So you need to make those initial sales, which is why I recommend driving traffic from your Instagram or your Facebook or wherever to make those first few sales and then verify your payment information and then you'll get onto Teespring's marketplace and as I said, hopefully onto the boosted network and then take off from there. So I have a video covering this. We're just gonna quickly glance over it. How do you get those first few sales on Teespring? I recommend setting up an Instagram and using targeted hashtags to drive traffic to your storefront. So that is one way of doing it. I have a video that I'll link below and you can check that out as well. So there's going to be a list of videos down below. Make sure you check those out because there's so much more information or like I said, check out the print on demand playlist or Teespring tutorial playlist that I have for you guys. So people are always going to ask me, what about Facebook ads? Why don't I just use Facebook ads? You could do that, but I always try and keep these videos as beginner friendly as possible. Most beginners aren't very good with Facebook ads and not very good with targeting, etc. So you kind of throw in your money away, which I don't recommend. That's the beauty of these print on demand websites and that's why I like teaching this stuff because anyone can start with almost no capital to start up. So instead of you throwing money away doing Facebook ads, you could be just putting in the work and driving people through targeted hashtags towards your niche storefront, then they make purchases and then you eventually get onto that Teespring marketplace and onto the boosted network. And with Redbubble, you don't even need to worry about that. And with Amazon, you just need to get accepted and then you'll start getting marketed by both those websites. So it doesn't apply for those two, but it does apply for Teespring. But once you're on Teespring, you're on there for good anyway. You don't have to keep doing this. And so eventually you don't need to use social media to drive traffic, but it's still a good idea, like it's still a good practice and you build your following up anyway and a brand with a following has power. So one of the other things that I recommend for your social media marketing, specifically Instagram, is using placeit.net's mock-up generator. I do have a video covering this as well, so it's in that placeit tutorial. And this mock-up generator is where, you, like I mentioned before, you can do your logo and upload it onto models. It mocks up onto their shirts and you can even do videos these days on there, which is crazy. And then it's gonna give that social proof that people have bought your shirts and then that's gonna make people more interested to go and buy because when people see people doing things or wearing things, they wanna do and wear those things as well. It's one of the oldest tricks in marketing. So one plot twist that I have for you guys at the end here is you don't actually need to be in a specific niche in the long term. So once you're on the marketplace, like it, don't get me wrong, it's great to be in a niche and to be a powerhouse brand in a niche, but you don't actually have to do that with these marketplaces. So once you get that initial Teespring trust score and you're on the marketplace, or you get accepted and you're on Merch by Amazon and moving up the tiers, or Redbubble, you just keep uploading anyway, once you're on there and you've driven traffic and you're getting initial sales and then they start marketing for you, that gets the machine rolling and now you can actually upload any sort of designs and they will advertise those designs for you either way. So once you're on these marketplaces and you're established, any sort of shirts you upload, they're going to push them for you and they're gonna do all the marketing and retargeting and things like that for you, like placing of your ads around the internet, all of that stuff for you and it's beautiful because you upload it, they do all the marketing and you just sit back and watch the profits come in. So all you need to do is keep uploading more designs and making sure that they're quality, not spammy, not copyright and no infringements of any kind using other people's logos or trademarks, things like that and then they do all the marketing for you. So that's it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it all makes sense to you. If you have any questions at all, make sure you drop them down below. I'll be able to direct you to the videos that I have referenced in this video. Otherwise, just check out those playlists as I said. If you have any video suggestions, drop them down below. If you have any questions at all, make sure you drop them down below. I answer every single comment in every single video down below. So. Make sure it's on my recent videos that you comment your questions because 
When it's on an older video, I don't always see the comments, so I might miss them. If you comment on my recent videos, I will definitely see them. So please give the video a like for me. It really helps me out. It helps me get boosted on the YouTube algorithm, and then it inspires me to make more of these sorts of tutorials for you guys. So I hope this helps you out. Print on demand for beginners, very in-depth video covering a lot of things, and I'll continue to bring this good content to you guys in the future. Please hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.